Greetings, this is J. Peter Brzezzi, and this demo on how to configure a smart host for Exchange in Small Business Server is from our SBS 2011 course. All right, so we're on our SBS server, and we're going to configure a smart host for this Exchange server. Now, just to explain the purpose of a smart host again, a smart host allows you to send mail through an alternate set of servers. And the reason for this is because oftentimes, especially when you're a small business and you're connected up to an internet service provider, an ISP, your IP address might be on a blacklist. And it's not because you did anything wrong. It has nothing to do with you, actually. But IP addresses, and actually blocks of IP addresses, are blacklisted, typically because there's a need to reduce the amount of spam in the world and it's just too easy for persons to just set up servers like this and shoot spam out from them so the idea is to blacklist servers of this type or blocks of IP addresses so you can try to set up your exchange to just go right to the internet you can actually configure it and we'll show you this in a moment configure it to use straight DNS MX records but what will typically happen is when you try to send email some of it may get through but in many cases it will not because various block list providers will keep you out. So how do you get around that? Well, the way you get around that is by setting up a smart host. Now you can attempt to get smart host provisions from your ISP. You can contact them and let them know what you're looking to do. Or you can look to third parties, companies out there on the internet. In our case, I took a look at this Socket Labs and they have a basic package that's free and for the sake of setting up a lab and teaching this course, it made sense to go with them because they did give us free use of their services. Okay, so once you get that set up and you know what your information is going to be for your smart host, what you would do is you can run this little wizard, configure a smart host for internet email. And by the way, if you're looking over here and you see the critical messages for security and for updates, I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. Our focus is Exchange, so I'll let Ed explain how to fix these issues here on the right-hand side. If we click Next, you'll note that I already have Smart Host Configuration set up. And that's because I needed to make sure it worked before I taught this lesson. So all I did was I came in here and I clicked I need to configure a Smart Host Server for Internet Email. I put in the information that was given to me by Socket Labs and I put in the username and password that they provided. And that was pretty much it. Once you do that, you click Next. And it configures your Exchange server as a smart host. Now, notice what it actually does, because this is a nice wizard, but what's happening behind the scenes? Well, if we go to the Exchange Management Console, under Organization Configuration, we have the hub transport role and you can see here we have send connectors now there are send connectors and there are receive connectors the receive connectors are actually located under the server configuration information here but we're focused right now on sending email and so if we open up to the properties of the send connector that's here and we go to the network tab you can see that this was set up for us thanks to that wizard route mail through the following smart hosts and you can have more than one so here we have the smart host that socket labs gave us this is the name of the server that we're going through the configuration for authentication is already done we're all set however if we wanted to go back to using DNS MX records to route mail automatically we could click this checkbox up here and then of course it's hit or miss as to whether or not a person will receive the email depending on whether or not they're utilizing a block list provider and whether or not your IP address is part of a block of IP addresses that's considered off limits. So we're going to leave it as the smart host. We say OK and we can move on. Now I don't know about you, but when it comes to setting up an exchange server, I don't do anything without testing it to see, hey, did I make something work or did I break something? That just makes sense, doesn't it? So we've just configured a send connector Shouldn't we make sure it works? Let's do that by going to our Outlook web app. And what we're going to do is just log in as the global admin and send an email off to that Gmail account that they have set up. 
globemantics at gmail.com. Ultimately, we're going to use this mailbox with a POP3 connector, but for now, we're just going to use it as a demonstration through our Outlook web app. And if you're not too sure how to get to Outlook web app, if you just type in HTTPS, the name of the server, and then OWA for Outlook web app. And so we're just going to log in as global admin. It's the same password as your domain account. And as you can see, we have summary network reports that are being sent to us automatically. We're just going to send an email and let's just see if it gets where it has to go. We're going to send it to globemantics at gmail.com. All right, we click send. We go over to our Gmail account and you just saw it come in as we got here. So everything's working in that respect. So as we can see, everything's working in terms of our smart host. And we might as well test to see if email's going back in. Let's send an email back to Global Admin. And you can see it all worked out. It says it's coming from me, but the Globomantics at gmail.com account is actually set up with my name. So that's why it's saying it's coming from me. So we know we set up this smart host and we realize that that is how our email is getting to that Gmail account. But when we replied here, how did the email get back to us? We appreciate that there are DNS servers and so forth. So we know how it found gmail.com. How did it find Globomantics.com? Well, behind the scenes here, there have been some changes made to our DNS settings, which are located here on GoDaddy. So if we just take a look at the configuration for our Globomantics.com domain, you can see that some of these settings that were already configured in a previous lesson are here to help individuals that are sending email to our domain to actually make sure that that email gets to the users within our domain. As long as Exchange is set up properly, the key will be whether or not the public DNS can send that mail in the right direction. So if we look here, we see that we have a host A record, which points off to the side of our router that will then forward that information, whether it's a www request or whatever it is that is looking for the host itself, onto our SBS server. In addition, we have a remote A record, which points off to the same router. And then when it comes to the router itself, you'll need to configure port forwarding so that the various ports are open and sending mail through. So whether it's port 25 for SMTP traffic or port 80 for HTTP or ports 443 or 987, all of those need to be configured to forward to your SBS server. So every router is different. No doubt you worked through some of this in an earlier lesson. And so when we try to connect to our server, the remote a host record allows us to get through. Now that's not enough for email itself. This just allows for connections that are, let's say using remote.globomantics.com. But how will email get to this server? Well, for that, you need a special MX record. It stands for Mail Exchanger. And so if we scroll down, we can see that here we have this MX Exchanger record already created here. And we had to do this ourselves. We had to manually create this. Whether you are using GoDaddy or some other provider, they put in their own information in order to just get you started. And then you have to go in and you have to make changes. So in this case, we see the priority level is 10 which doesn't really matter because we don't have any other records in terms of priority. The lower the priority number, the higher it is in the list. So in this case, we have it going to the host, which is A, which means it's not for some subdomain, but it's for the primary domain, globomantics.com. It points to remote.globomantics.com, which we know from the A record here is going to point off to the server itself. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.